And welcome back to the hot lap. We're talking Carlos Sainz, the Australian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen out. Carlos Sainz wins. Wow. I mean, Carlos Sainz, this guy, comes back from an appendicitis out of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Second on the grid for Australia, out qualifying his teammate. Remember, Sainz, he's the one that's unemployed, and then wins the race. Yes, he passed Max Verstappen as well. To be fair to Max, he did have an issue with a slight brake snatch, which we'll get into a bit later. But I mean, let's look up, let's just quickly look at the results. Yeah, we've got Carlos Sainz winning the race at full 25 points. I mean, absolutely amazing. Showed Leclerc the way, let's be fair. I mean, I'm not going to put, when we do winners and losers, on purpose. I'm definitely not putting Leclerc in the winner's section. I don't think he's a loser. He finished second. That, I mean, Ferrari, absolutely. I don't want to say ominous because Red Bull were having a bit of a mare, particularly with Verstappen, but a 1-2 for Ferrari. Um, I think the last time that happened, was it Bahrain, 22? Lando Norris in third, 5.9. I mean, look how close this is, 2.3. Yes, the Ferraris were pacing themselves in the end. I think they were told to hold station, but Lando Norris, within six seconds of the lead, he was closing in on Leclerc. That McLaren pace looked genuine. I mean, that McLaren easily, you know, other than Carlos Sainz, Norris, I think, was the second fast. It was, you know, easily the second fastest car in Albert Park. It's just, he, I've li just listened to the interview with Sky Sports and he even thought, had they pitted him earlier, potentially, he would have finished ahead of Leclerc, but could have, would have, should have. I think if you told McLaren you're finishing third and fourth in the Australian Grand Prix coming into the weekend, they would have very much said, yes, please. Thank you very much. Their best weekend so far in the 2024 season. Next up, we've got Sergio Perez. 56 seconds in what many believe is the fastest car. The RB20. Yeah. Alonso. Um, well, special note to Oscar Piastri. He did let Lando Norris by. And, I mean, the... the uh, the race result was also a bit ski whiffed with the uh, George Russell incident where he, uh, yeah, land, well, not didn't land on his side, but ended up on his side because of the, of, because of that virtual safety car. So it says 35 seconds and 56. My mistake. It was the virtual safety car that kind of ski whiffs that result. But still, well done, Piastri. All that pressure. Finishing fourth, just outside the podium. What more? I don't think you could have asked anything more for him. Let Lando Norris th through. In the interview, he even put his hand up saying, yeah, yeah, he, you know, Norris was the one that qualified me. He was faster. What a guy. I mean, this guy. I do think he is going to start to worry Lando Norris. Not in a bad way, but in terms of his, in terms of his pace, since Carlos Sainz, I mean, we had obviously Danny Ricciardo. I think he's going to really, like, like Sainz, I think he's going to really push Norris. And we'll see, we'll really see what both of them have got. But what a barometer Piastri has. So Sergio Perez in fifth. Yes. Qualified, not amazing, let's say. Then he had that, he kind of held up Hulkenberg in qualifying, got a three-place grid penalty, but still, at one point, he looked really, really fast. And then he wasn't. Uh, sixth, Fernando Alonso. Well, he currently, potentially, under investigation for almost like, well, they're saying brake checking George Russell. It wasn't quite like that. We're not talking Saudi Arabia, Max Verstappen 2021, but he was a lot slower in turn six. That's before that middle part of the, the, the middle DRS zone, let's say, of the track. And George Russell was quite surprised. He did catch him really quickly. It went off, lost, kind of lost all the grip with the front ring. It went off. George Russell puts his hand up again. I mean, it, it, it's uh, shades of Singapore, isn't it? So, yeah, but Lance Stroll, seventh. Well done, Mr. Stroll. I think really, really good. Really, really solid. Finishing finishing behind Alonso. I don't think you could have asked anything more. But Sonoda in eighth. I mean, fantastic. He, quali he qualified there. I had my doubts whether he's going to finish there, but Yuki Sonoda, brilliant. Hulkenberg, I think equally. Hulkenberg and Magnussen has, I mean, compared to where they were, Going into the season, going into that first race, what more could you ask? Albon finishing 11th eventually, just that one place out of the points. Was it worth the gamble? Probably was, to be fair, but at what cost? What I think Logan Sargent needs to do now is absolutely nail it and destroy Albon, destroy him in Japan. Whether that's going to happen or not, I have absolutely no idea. I don't think it will. I wouldn't bet on it. But let's hope this lights a fire up the bottom 
of Logan Sargent, and he shows us what we, you know, what he's really got now. The Gasly thirteenth, good. Bottas for you know solid. I think definitely the stronger of the uh, of the Alpines this weekend, but but uh, Bottas fourteenth, Zhao in fifteenth. Yeah. Um. The I mean <laughs> the, the problem is the pit stops, isn't it? With their with their design thing, it's like what. What is going? What is going on there? Okay, Ocon sixteenth, the last of the runners, and then we've got both. When was the, I don't know when. When was the time when both Mercedes went out of the race? I cannot remember a time that actually happened, and I well, I can remember the last time Verstappen went out. That was uh, Australia twenty twenty two. So that's basically that's essentially the rundown of the the results. But on that on that note let's get into our grand prix winners and losers and as you can see here straight away straight away is a man of the race get this let's get this over and you know he deserves he deserves absolutely full billing a full billing does carlos science with man of the race as i said saudi arabia has his appendicitis take you know gets it takes gets it taken out 10 days in bed by his own admission. Looked pretty rough after practice one and two. Qualifying still. Even before the race, Martin Brundle was saying how rough this poor guy looked. But he wins the race. He wins the race, lifts the trophy up. This is the result, I think, that Formula One needed. It wasn't a classic race. Um, in terms of excitement, you can make an argument that Singapore was more exciting, his last win. But, yeah, he's won. He, this is his, this, he's won 22, 23, and now... 2024, and this also means that Red Bull can't win all the races, which would have been, I think, difficult, which I think would have been difficult anyway, but well done. Carlos Sainz, absolutely massive, massive thumbs up there, but let's get into our losers before we get into the rest of our winners. For me, the biggest loser is Mercedes, not Toto Wolf, but it's the, it's the Mercedes Formula One team. They've, we kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt for the first two races. And then came Australia. I don't think we can give them the benefit of the, of, of, of the, the doubt anymore. That car has issues. I mean, George Russell was struggling. Lewis Hamilton was struggling. Lewis Hamilton, to be fair to him, he had closed the gap quite significantly to George, to George Russell. Where they both would have ended, who knows. But they've built that you know, engine failure as well with um, Lewis Hamilton. Again, you know, okay... You know, maybe you can't do too much about that. It's one of those things. But then it also, it does bring the question up. Is that the cooling issue? Is Mercedes suffering that cooling issue that they suffered in Bahrain? Is that the reason for that engine for that engine failure? Can you... Yes, it, I mean, you can blame them. But they had to do something different this year. They tried to. And it looks like potentially they failed. I mean, Toto Wolf does say there's, you know, they, we're... we're we are hope there's there is speed in this car. They've been saying that since 22 and 23. And with a Ferrari 1-2, is Lewis now having a wry smile on his face, knowing that he'll be driving uh, an evolution, so to speak, of that of that of that vehicle. Excuse me. An evolution of that vehicle next year. He's gotta be, he's gotta be, he's gotta be really, really he's gotta be really, really happy about that, hasn't he? So, next up, our next loser, this guy here, Sergio Perez. I mean, you're in the fastest car, I think. A lot of people think you're in the fastest car. Okay, you didn't qualify that well, partly because of that grid position. Yeah. And then you finish fifth. I mean, you finish fifth behind two, behind two McLarens and two Ferraris. You not even a sniff of the podium. This is, Ser I mean, we were hoping Sergio Perez started off really well. Finishing second in Bahrain. Finishing second in Saudi Arabia. Then finishing fifth with Max Verstappen out. He should be fighting for the lead. At the very least, be fighting for that podium. He just didn't have the, he just didn't have the pace. Which then brings you to how good is Max Verstappen in that Red Bull? Or is that Red Bull completely suited to Max Verstappen? Both of them, you, you can make really good arguments for. But you could also make an argument for Paris is not in the league of Max Verstappen. And yeah, we've known that for a long time. But I think he's really where where Max Verstappen went out, he absolutely let let, let his team down. No no ex uh, unless he comes out with an excuse there's something wrong with the car. Yeah. Uh 
Sorry, Perez. It's 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 a no from us. Next up, we've got Nico Hulkenberg. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to put both house drivers in there, but he was the faster of the two house drivers. Just like I haven't put Piastri in the winners, even though he's definitely not a loser. He's kind of like up there in the winners' echelon, doing a solid job. Hulkenberg ninth, really, 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 really solid job as well. Fan, fantastic. Far, I mean, yes, there was. Uh, you know, his teammate let him by. He was clearly the fastest driver on the day. Points are scored on the Sunday. And who would have thought? Haas finishing ninth and 10th. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So, next up, we've got Yuki Sanoda beating both the Hasses. Eighth. Brilliant. More, I mean, points for RB. The qualifying wasn't a fluke, wasn't a fluke, was it? He's done really, really well, and I could not be happier for him. And our last winner of the day is Lando Norris in third, giving Charles Leclerc something to worry about. I think throughout the whole race, it's a shame because on a slightly different strategy, I, I think he would have at least finishing second. Who knows? The odd safety car, a scary restart. Who knows what could have? Who knows what could have happened? And as I said, a man of the race, but. So let's quickly remind you of all the losers of the all the excuse me, let's quickly remind you then of all the winners and losers before we before we uh go out uh onto the new couple of news stories that I want to get into. So we've got um it's okay, it's okay, it's all going wrong, isn't it? Go away, Lando. We'll speak we'll speak we'll speak to you in a minute. Um This race, easily the best race of the uh, of the year so far, albeit it's kind of uh, it's it's starting from quite a low key though, isn't it? Bearing in mind Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Okay, so we've got Toto Wolf representing the Mercedes team. Hamilton out, Russell out. Not necessarily his fault. We'll see, but very slow. That is Mercedes' fault. They need to sort it out, don't they? And I don't think we can give them the benefit of the doubt anymore. That is a slow car. It's not quite the crisis, but I think if it continues after Japan, it may well be. Sergio Paris, so when your teammate goes out in the fastest car, you've really got to be finishing second or at least on the podium. Not even near. Not even a sniff. The podium was a dot to you, Sergio Paris. But Nico Hülkenberg in that has finishing ninth. Absolutely fantastic. More points for the team. At least they did it fairly this time <laughs> without much controversy. Well done to the uh, our first winner, Nico Hülkenberg. But talking about winners, Yuki Tsunoda, top 10 qualifying. In eighth position, fantastic. Cannot knock that at all. Lando Norris, well done on the podium. His first podium, 14 podiums, matching Nick Heidfeld for most podiums without a win. That's a stat he won't want to keep. But our man of the race, Carlos Sainz. Fantastic. Appendicitis goes out, comes back, doesn't quite stick in the pole, but on the front row, overtakes Max Verstappen. Yes, Max had a problem, but then wins the race. Need I say more? So... Let's have a. I mean, let's have a look at the other stories then, in relation to in relation to what happened during during the weekend. I mean, the two the two big stories here is Lewis Hamilton's non finish, and as we know, he retired from the Australian Grand Prix after stopping with an apparent engine failure on his Mercedes W15. He was seen slowing on the back straight after 16 laps, reporting an engine failure. When you looked on board, it didn't quite. It felt like boom, you know, something was going on in the back of that car, and the reliability issue it says here came after Hamilton pitted early, starting on those soft tyres, which was a really weird move. It was it was apparently really hot in Australia, and even the commentators were like going, "Eh, in why? What are you doing?" So that was weird. I don't, I don't get it. But Hamilton stoppage made him the second retirement of the day after Max Verstappen and the first DNF of the season put a cap on what was really a miserable weekend. I mean, he looked strong-ish in practice, especially uh, practice three. Qualified, they say here, a distant 11th. It wasn't a distant 11th. He only just got knocked out. In, we're, we're talking hundreds, really, at the end of the day. But then started 11th, probably would have finished in the points. Wasn't that far away from George Russell. And yeah, um, I think you put the blame more on Mercedes than Hamilton for that one. So Verstappen, out. Who would have thought it? So he started the Melbourne race from pole, but he couldn't hold on to his lead as Carlos Sainz swooped past him on lap two, which was a surprise to us all. He ended up on that turn six where Albon uh, went off having that problem. And then Carlos Sainz 
got past him on the DRS, which was good. And you just heard the crowd roar. So on lap four, it became apparent that lots of smoke coming for his car. We thought initially it was an engine failure, but it was his right rear, right rear corner. And towards the end of the lap, he Verstappen just backed off and he said, my right rear brake basically stuck on from what was stuck on from when the lights went off to the temperatures just kept on increasing until the point of course it caught fire Verstappen said I had a moment after that first lap but then already the temperature was increasing and increasing so it just works like a handbrake but of course I didn't know that stuff was happening it just felt the problem was the car and the balance was off poor guy but um yeah Verstappen's brake failure ended a run of 43 consecutive races without honor retirement all in the points too and his last DNF coming at Albert Park Australia in 2022 he says that a good run of Red Bull reliability makes his Melbourne retirement easier to take. He said, of course, we had a lot of good races in a row, a lot of good reliability. And I knew that the day would come that you end up having a retirement. And unfortunately, that day was today. We just had a really good, very good run of two years. That's quite impressive. Of course, you never like to see it happen, but it's more important now that we understand why. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, very, to be fair, yeah, very sensible, calm. Can't really, I mean, you can't, can't really can't really knock it, can you? So, I mean, yeah. I mean, what 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 can I say? What can I say? So this is the drivers' championship. We've got Verstappen now on fifty-one points, Charles Leclerc on forty-seven. I mean, who would have thought after two races we would have had Leclerc in second, Perez in third, all within about five points of each other, Sainz in fourth, within. Uh, I mean, all within a win. Piastri in fifth, Norris in sixth, 28 and 27 for McLaren, Alonso seventh, Russell eighth, Hamilton ninth, and Stroll uh, rounding out the top ten. But we've got Behrman in 11th, Sonoda in 12th, Hulkenberg 13th, and Magnussen 14th. And then, uh, yeah, that's all the people, all the people that have scored. Let's look at let's look at how that changes the driver, the team, the teams, the constructors, uh, Ferrari. Five points behind Red Bull. Who would have thought that? But they did have that one too. McLaren very much in third at the moment. Aston Martin in fourth. And Mercedes in fifth. That's quite disappointing. RB getting their points in sixth. Haas seventh. Uh, similar. Same amount of points. But RB has finished higher. That's kind of why. And then Williams, Sauber and Alpine still to score points. So that's pretty much our race review. Subscribe if you can. We would really appreciate that. And we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much.